Merced, ya Cid, barba tan cumplida. Anónimo, poema de Mio Cid. Hello again, let's continue analyzing Cervantes' masterpiece. Once again, the Duchess takes the initiative. She recalls that, according to what she has read, Don Quixote has never met Dulcinea. It is known, if I don't remember wrong, that your grace has never seen Lady Dulcinea and that she does not exist in the world, but is a fantastical damsel, one that your grace engendered and gave birth to in your imagination and painted her with all the graces and perfections that you wished. Don Quixote now becomes as contradictory as ever. First, he admits that God only knows if there is a Dulcinea in the world or not, or whether she is fantastical or not fantastical. But then he reverts to his antiquated vision of Dulcinea as high-born and pure-blooded. High in lineage because in the company of good blood, the splendor and power of beauty attains more degrees of perfection than in the low-born beauties. Not surprisingly, the Duchess endorses the spirit of Don Quixote's loyalty to his beloved, but referring to Sancho's testimony that he saw Dulcinea threshing buckwheat instead of pure grain, she questions the idea that the Tobosan woman is a model of blood purity, which makes me doubt the highness of her lineage. This leads Don Quixote to voice another convoluted and contradictory disquisition on the lives of knights errant. He doubts Sancho's testimony. I have already stated that wheat was neither buckwheat nor wheat itself, but grains of oriental pearls. And he compares Dulcinea to Helen of Troy and La Cava of Spain. The last comparison, of course, cast aspersions on Dulcinea's purity. The overarching problem here remains the fact that El Toboso was populated by moriscos. And so Don Quixote's efforts at redeeming Dulcinea are ridiculous. And once again, as readers, our problem is how to navigate the irony. Is Don Quixote insane in an overtly negative sense for rejecting Dulcinea's impurity? Or is he insane in a more subtle positive sense for refusing to be dissuaded from loving a morisca? Did you know? Modern feminism dates from the Renaissance and is particularly associated with the novel form. See, for example, the novels by Maria de Zayas and Madame de Lafayette. Adding to the social complexity, Don Quixote now qualifies his opinion of Sancho by insisting that, although the squire has defects, he would not trade him for any other squire in the world. Nevertheless, at the end of his speech, Don Quixote vacillates over whether or not Sancho will make a good governor. I am in doubt as to whether it is right to send him to the governorship that your highness has granted him, although I do see in him a certain capacity for governing. Note the cynicism when Don Quixote takes a final jab at all rulers everywhere. We know well from many experiences that neither much talent nor much education are necessary to be a governor. As if on cue, Sancho now reappears, interrupting Don Quixote's speech. Here, we twice read the word rogue, or pícaro in Spanish, reinforcing the idea that both Sancho's merit and his ethnicity are at issue. The squire runs into the dining hall trying to escape having his beard washed with dirty water by servants who are intent on playing another prank. Notice the social significance of Sancho's concern. There's not so much difference between me and my master, such that they should wash him with the water of angels and me with the bleach of devils. Quixotic Mission According to Don Quixote, which characteristics, activities, or knowledge are not required in order to govern? A. Morality and mathematics. B. Enthusiasm and exercise. C. Talent and education. Correct answer, C. Talent and education. Once again, the Duchess comes to Sancho's rescue, accusing the servants of going too far. Notice how she uses a pun to portray these tricksters as overly orthodox. You ministers of cleanliness, you have gone too far and been negligent. Sancho kneels before the Duchess to show his gratitude and she responds by promising that she will make sure that my lord the Duke 
as soon as he possibly can, keeps his promise to grant you the governorship. Cervantes has constructed the entire episode in order to mock the notion of blood purity. Remember that old Christians used blood purity to keep people of converso or morisco lineage out of positions of power. And remember that this policy even seems to have kept Cervantes himself from obtaining sinecures in the New World. That's all for now. Join me next time as we continue interpreting the most important literary masterpiece in the Spanish language. Once again, Cervantes is counterculture. Whoa, 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 wait. This is my space. Once again, Cervantes is countercultural with respect to his time by advancing feminist ideas. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. To enroll in our course, click here. Also, please follow us on our social media.